Welcome to Astronomy at Home story time from the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Um, many of you have been here with us before, but just for those of you who maybe are new and here for the first time, welcome. Um, during our story time, we read a storybook. Usually it's about space, astronomy, or science. And then we try an activity and have time for questions and shares. So we have a fun game plan for our activity today. I just want to mention that we're recording this session, um, but we're going to be careful that we don't record any of your faces in the video. Um, so uh, you and you'll be able to watch the recording later if you want by going to our website astrosociety.org slash story time. That's also where you can find recordings of. So today, the book that we're reading is called Margaret and the Moon, How Margaret Hamilton Saved the First Lunar Landing. Landing. This book is written by Dean Robbins and illustrated by Lucy Knisley. And illustrated means that Lucy drew the pictures for the book. So here we go. Let's learn more about Margaret Hamilton. Here's the inside of the book and we see there's our main character, Margaret, is looking out of the window of her house up into the sky where the stars and a big full moon. Did anyone see the big full moon last night? I, I was so happy to see that moon rising outside my bedroom window. Margaret Hamilton loved to solve problems. She came up with ideas no one had ever thought of before. There she is with the chalkboard, writing out some formulas, doing some math. Why were there only daddy long legs? Margaret had a solution. She would call some of them mommy long legs too. Why didn't girls play baseball? Margaret had a solution. She would join the team herself. Why didn't more gr girls grow up to be doctors or scientists or anything else they wanted? Margaret had a solution. She would study hard in every subject at school. She gazed at the night sky in wonder. Look at that night sky. You can see they drew in the constellations and wrote the names. And there she is lying in the grass, looking up at that night sky, that crescent moon. How many miles to the moon? And this says 238,855. <laughs> How many miles? Does it travel? How many miles does it travel around the Earth? The, how many miles does the Moon travel around the Earth? One million four hundred twenty-three thousand. Wow. How fast does it go? Two thousand two hundred eighty-eight miles per hour. How big around is it? Six thousand seven hundred eighty-three miles. So Margaret, see, it, she's pretending that she's hugging that moon. Now the moon is really way too big to give it a hug, right? But she really loves the moon and she loves learning about all the numbers related to the moon, how far away, how fast. Margaret began solving harder and harder math problems. It was fun working her way through the steps. I love solving math problems too. I think that's pretty fun. She liked moving around X's and Y's in algebra. She liked measuring circles and triangles in geometry. She liked studying curves in calculus. And then she discovered computers. Now here she is walking into this room with all of these machines. So you probably all have a computer at home. In fact, you're probably listening to story time on a computer, right? Do your computers look like this? Are they this big? They have all these wires and buttons and where's the screen? How do I get on Zoom? <laughs> well, th this is what 
what the very first computers looked like quite a long time ago. Um, and so this is before I was even born. Um, so these are some of the first computers and Margaret was one of the first people to learn how to really use computers. And she was very excited about it. In 1964, Margaret got interested in an exciting project for NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. There, scientists were working on the hardest problem humans ever tried to solve, flying people to the moon. We know Margaret loves the moon. Could Margaret use computers to get, to the, to get the astronauts 238,855 miles there? and 238,855 miles back. That's a long way. She convinced NASA's leaders to let her try. Oops. Moment. Margaret thought of everything that could happen on a trip to the moon. Would the spacecraft go off course? Would it lose power? Would an astronaut make a mistake? Margaret wrote code to tell the com computers how to solve these problems. And there's some of Margaret's code there. These are instructions for the computer. She worked her way through the steps just as she used to do in, in math class. And there she is at work at NASA at her desk, working on her code. Soon Margaret became director of software programming for NASA's Project Apollo, leading dozens of scientists. She helped Apollo 8 orbit the moon 10 times. She helped Apollo 9 connect two ships in space. She helped Apollo 10 get within nine miles of the moon's surface. Hello there. So that's really close to the moon. It was closer than, than humans had ever gotten to the moon before. With Apollo 11, NASA would finally try to put people on the moon. Had Margaret thought of everything that could go wrong with a lunar landing? She checked her code again to make sure. The astronauts were depending on her. And this says Margaret's code. Look at that tall, tall stack of papers. Imagine how much writing she did and calculating and figuring. So now you just type your code right into the computer, but she actually had it all written out on paper. And here we go. Want to help me count down from 10? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, lift off. Apollo 11 rose with a blast of smoke and fire. There it goes, that rocket. Margaret followed along from a control room and the whole world watched on television. So there she is in NASA's control room. She's got her code printed out and all these different controls to, to send messages. And here's some kids watching, watching this on TV. This is an old black and white television. It's a very exciting time. For four days, the spacecraft drew nearer to the moon. The lunar module named the Eagle split off to make the landing. Yippee, there it is. There's the lunar module. But within minutes left to go, an astronaut entered a command and the master alarm buzzed. Uh-oh. And here the astronaut is saying, whoops. The Eagle's computer started performing too many tasks. Overload, overload. It didn't know what to do. Yikes. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen? The control room panicked. The moon landing was in danger. Everyone looked at Margaret. Had she prepared for this problem? Of course. 
Margaret's code made the computer ignore the extra tasks and focus on the landing. It brought the eagle closer to the moon's surface. Closer and closer and touchdown. It landed on the surface. The eagle has landed, announced astronaut Neil Armstrong. The control room cheered. Margaret was a hero. Later that night, the eagle's hatch opened. Margaret held her breath. Armstrong took the first step on the moon. Hooray, hurrah, and here's, here's, Hooray in many different languages from all over the world because people all over the world were so excited about this first time that humans landed on the moon. Margaret walked outside smiling. Her code had helped the astronauts get to the moon and she knew it would help them get home safely. As always, she gazed at the night sky in wonder. And there she is looking up at that big full moon and she knows those astronauts landed on that moon and she helped to make it happen. And here in the back of the book are some photographs of Margaret um, when she was a child, looked dressed up as a butterfly. There she is, remember that drawing of her with her stack of papers of code? And there's the photograph that drawing was based on. Here she is in a um, Apollo command module and working at um, MIT where she worked before she worked at NASA. So what an interesting person. And she did important work with computers to help humans get to the moon. And now I'm gonna turn it, oh wait, and I'm gonna let you know what, book we're reading next month. Um, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa, to Teresa to lead us in a fun activity. So next time we're going to be reading Follow the Moon Home by Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Melo So. And that is on Tuesday, May 25th, whoop, 2021. We got the year wrong there. Um, but um, at the end of May, We'll be reading this book. So you can check out the details at astrosociety.org slash storytime. It's not quite up there yet, but if you check back next week, we'll have that information up there and you can sign up to join us next month. All right, and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Teresa. Thanks so much, Anna. That's such a great story. And um, she's still alive, Margaret Hamilton. She um, doesn't work for NASA anymore, but... Um, this is a very famous picture of her where she is with all her codes like they showed you in the book. And here is another picture of her. Um, if you go to the next picture, thank you. That other picture is really well known, but this was the first time I had seen this picture. And this picture is where she's actually working on the hardware on the um, computer and putting in the programming instructions onto the spacecraft. Uh, so I thought that that was also a very cool picture. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So we are going to take some time to learn to code. And I wanted to tell you about a couple of words that you can have when you're thinking about this. And um, programmers are the people like Margaret who tell the computers what to do. And the way that they make those instructions, that's called code. So the programmers use the code to tell the computer what to do. And we're going to play a game like this. And so I'm just going to show you the next slide for the kids at home um, or people who are watching the video. Um, there's a statement in coding that's called if then statements. And so if I touch my nose, then you would touch your nose because I would be the programmer showing you what to do. And so you could play this with your family and friends or school classmates if, um, while you after you watch this recording, but we're going to stop our recording now um, so that we could play it here. Um, so nice to see you and thank you for coming to Storytime and we're going to turn off the recording.